I grew up in an environment where uh, you were taught to be in business for yourself. I didn't know that at the time, but it was being entrenched in me. I was working on a doctorate actually when I saw the industry of networking uh, after 25 years. Um, always have had some other jobs, always worked. Uh, educators don't make a lot of money, so you're always working another job or you're looking for another degree uh, to enhance that. And then um, when I saw networking, that was my aha moment to think, oh, I don't have to do all of this to make this kind of money. And it kind of was frightening for me to think that I met individuals who had spent uh, four or five years in business, then gone into networking and were making twice as much as I had taken 25 years to make. What we're doing here with the training center is exactly the same thing the founders did uh, with Global Links when they put it in place. We know that this training center gives us a believability. We know when a prospect comes into our training center and visits Five Links for the first time, they're going to be impressed. And they also know we're going to be here next week. And this training center is one of those things that, that I push for. My goal, I told this to our leadership, but my goal is to have 50 of these training centers in our organization around the country. How powerful is that going to be in the networking industry? We simulcast meetings, so we'll have a meeting going on here on Tuesday night, but we have a camera set up, we have our computers set up, all to drive that picture, the video, the data, everything right through the video phone, right to a remote location. In fact, uh, one of our uh, biggest successes so far is a group in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that we overnighted a video phone to them uh, back in the first part of March. Uh, five people showed up to this guy's living room, and we simulcast a Saturday morning meeting to his living room uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And here was the neat part. They couldn't even get it hooked up on his big screen TV. So I told him, I said, just turn the camera around, go around to the back of the TV, show me what you're doing, Let's see if we can straighten out. And I literally showed them through the video phone how to hook that TV up and make it work. From that meeting, that morning, today we have over 100 distributors. In less than two months, we have 100 distributors in the Milwaukee marketplace that we've never been to Milwaukee. We haven't done one meeting in Milwaukee personally. Everything we've done is video phones or they're doing some local meetings up there right now. But this video phone is phenomenal. Everything we do is for the betterment of, of the person. And when you can help people not only become a better person, but at the same time line their pockets, now you've got a win-win situation. But the best part about our relationship with Donna and myself is the stuff that I'm not really good at. I mean, I could do it if I had to, uh, but I'm always the guy on the front side. I like to just go make it happen and clean up the paperwork later. She, on the other hand, is the person back there always worrying about step one, step two, step three, step four. We've got a perfect relationship in that. So we're successful really because of the people in our organization. If we can help enough people get to a certain level of success, we'll achieve a level of success. But once again, it's more exciting to help somebody else do it than just do it for yourself. Working uh, a lot of hours, going to school all the time, and you get so consumed with things you have to do, things you have to do in your own personal life or your regular life and your work life, and you kind of forget. And my mother, uh, bless her heart, when she was ill, I didn't spend the time with her when she was alive, and she died quite suddenly, uh, when, you know, after a week of being ill. And I didn't have that time with her. I was always too busy, always doing this, always doing that. And I realized that that's why we do this business. And now that we have my father with us, uh, I, I get up, I mean, I have a set schedule, but I get up when I want. Um, I go work out, I take care of me first, I spend time uh, with my spiritual self, uh, and then it's uh, on with the day's calendar, you know, check appointments. And uh, we get to work um, a variety of different types of hours, and people say, you work all the time. And I said, no, I don't, because, you know, we took three days and went off to the Indy 500, you know? <laughs> It allows us to, to really control our life, and that's what I really love about it, and I'm pretty unemployable now. I don't care what they say, I wouldn't work eight to five for anyone because you get to dictate what's important to you, and it's your time, and it's your family. 
I was looking for a way to have more time to work with my third and long foundation. I really feel passionate about giving back, uh, giving to others. Uh, I'm very involved in our, our church and the mission and the missions department and uh, women's uh, leadership programs. And uh, I also work uh, with some other non-for-profits uh, outside of our own literacy foundation. And so that seems to be the most important thing to me is how I can give back to make it a better place. And I've always said in a lot of our training sessions that we're here for a little while, uh, but what we do with it and what we leave behind is the most important. And so the more we can give back to others, and I envision our organization growing worldwide, but just helping people all over the world, not only achieve financially, but achieve personally and letting them have a better quality of life.